just wanted to do a quick video um, explaining about some of the resources which are useful and helpful for looking at Ezra. And Ezra and Nehemiah were brought together in one book in the Jewish Bible. And also Ezra is considered to be the, the same chap who wrote one or two chronicles. So you see these books tied together quite strongly in the stories that they contain. Uh, couple of the resources that are quite helpful um, one is the bible project which is on youtube and they do lots of different videos but the videos that are specific about different books are really helpful there's one on ezra and nehemiah uh, there's another slightly older uh, approach which was done quite some time ago but it's actually really good and very thorough and some got some, some great insights as well that's by david paulson a bible teacher who's not alive now he's he died not long ago actually but he did some great material uh and uh you'll find that on youtube as well unlocking the bible i also found something else this morning which was really useful and i've come across them before but um it's a chap in ontario in canada um at Calvary Chapel uh Ontario and they do some quite good sermon talks and he's done one that's very good actually on Ezra one to three I was watching that today some of the things that are useful to understand with the background of uh, the book of Ezra is it ties quite closely to Nehemiah very similar structure uh the way the book is laid out uh there's also uh very importantly a prayer of national repentance that comes through. Interesting that Daniel also comes to that place around about the same place in his book. He also uh, brings, you know, a, a very much a repentance on behalf of the nation. So there's a real national call to returning to God. Um, so Ezra and Nehemiah uh, really reflect each other quite a lot. Very different characters. The two guys, Ezra uh, seems to focus quite a lot on lists and detail, uh, quite focused on the word. Nehemiah, very much a team builder. Uh, we really see bits of insight into his prayer life as well. But it's very important to understand there was this 70 years exile. They were they were taken out of the land. So you had early on you had the Assyrian invasion that took the ten tribes from the north of Israel, uh, the the kingdom of Israel as that were, and then you've got a later exile that comes uh, through the Babylonians which is the people of Judah in the south and this happens in about three stages so Daniel uh, is part of the earlier stage in 606 BC which is uh, people who were very much court officials and that kind of thing royal household uh, a little bit later there's a, another exile that happens um, and that that's a whole another group of people and there's these constant rebellions and people kicking against Babylon. Of course, finally, they've had enough. And the final exile uh, is in 587. And the uh, destruction is quite thorough. Um, what's interesting is that although there's destruction, and although the, the temple is destroyed, that talks about in Psalm 79, there's all these articles that go, but they get stored. And these are the ones that are returned and that uh, Ezra uh, talks about as well. Uh, much fewer people return back to the land and uh, it, they really come back in, in small numbers. Um, and uh, the numbers are calculated um, by Ezra. You know, he's talking about family groups and, uh, you know, they're trying to get more Levites and everything's very stop and start as well. They don't return back to the wholesale idolatry in the same way that happened before the exile. Uh, but there's other areas that they have to deal with, uh, other areas where they are really struggling. They were quite established and quite settled in Babylon. A lot of people didn't want to leave there, a um, place where they felt very rooted. And so it wasn't a great prospect to come back to this land. There was also a lot of opposition locally, especially the Samaritans, who were people who'd stayed and then uh, had gradually taken over territory and were uh, were were mixed in terms of they weren't seen as uh, pure Jews and and they, they weren't seen as the same people uh, so despised and that that carried on it was clear in the time of Jesus that 
uh, there was a lot of antipathy to, towards Samaritans and between Samaritans and Jews. And we see that in the place like John 4, the Samaritan woman at the well. And uh, and then Jesus uses that parable of the Good Samaritan as well in Luke 10. So uh, we see that there's a lot of local opposition and some questioning about whether there's a real right for them to be rebuilding the temple. Uh, all this goes back to this edict of Cyrus and, and this is referred back to in various times as well uh, as the authority. Uh, the interesting thing was Cyrus had that kind of policy of, of getting people back into their land, worshipping their local gods, using it as a sort of insurance policy in different places, but very much making sure that uh, there was definitely political control over the people who were put back into their lands. It's a very different kind of approach, but amazing that Cyrus is predicted in his Isaiah 45 quite some time beforehand, in his Isaiah 44 and 45. So that's a little bit of a background. Um, I'll put the links in the video, uh, the other resources, which are really helpful, quite detailed, but I think it's quite good to get context. So what I often do with my little talks is perhaps draw on a, a verse or draw on a thought, you know, and, and reflect on it. But I don't want it to be too much out of context uh, with, um, with with the whole picture, which which really helps us. It's quite important with the Bible to get a, a whole picture sometimes of what's happening, because it it, it gives you perspective about the uh, the, the storyline and 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 the history, but also it helps you to understand the context of what's going on. Uh, and so when we look at a verse, we can see where it comes from and there's, there's often a lot to draw from the larger storyline as well and that's quite important um the bible's full of uh, a, a narrative which it, it helps us to look at how god deals with people and how he works his purposes through history as well at different times and different seasons um, and amazing how he does that despite uh, people's rejection despite uh, the rebellion uh, despite uh, all the things that could possibly go wrong, seem to possibly go wrong. Uh, and so we can see God's sovereignty in the situation as well. But I, but I thought a quick overview would be useful just to pass on a few different things. And then also I would recommend as well, if you want to get uh, some, some great in-depth and thorough um, uh, teaching and uh, overview from some of the people who've, done great studies then uh, i'm going to put those links in as well so i hope that's helpful anyway blessings on you and whoever's watching this and and uh please subscribe to the channel as well it'd be great if you can really help me and it help more people get to access it because it'll be suggested more widely um please please subscribe and like and comment um that's really really helpful so um thank you so much indeed all right bye for now